This is Bob Capetta, professor of mathematics at College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this lesson is Mathematics for Health Sciences, Confidence Intervals for Proportions. So a proportion is determined by looking at the number of winners divided by the total number of elements in our sample. We use the symbol P to represent the population proportion. Remember, population means everybody in the group to be studied. It is usually impractical to go ahead and get everybody in the entire population. What we do instead is we take a sample, a random sample of items in the population, and we analyze that data. We use the symbol P with a little caret on top. We read that as P hat to represent that sample proportion. And P hat is the probability of winning. So that's a total number of winners divided by the entire total. Q hat is 1 minus the probability of winning. Q hat is 1 minus P hat. That is our probability of losing. The formula that we're going to use for our confidence interval for the proportion is P hat plus or minus Z alpha by 2 times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. Now before we do this, we have to examine the fairness. And to use the strategy, the number of winners and the number of losers has to be large. So let's define what those concepts mean. We want the number of winners and losers to be at least five, so five or more. If I'm looking at a situation where four out of ten people watch a football game, my P hat is four out of ten. Well, in that case, we would call the people who are doing the thing we're measuring winners. So there are four winners, four people watch the football game. People who did not do what we're measuring we call losers. There are six losers. Well, the number of winners is small, so it's not fair for us to use this method. Both winners and losers has to be large. In the second example, we are going to take 20 out of 22 people use a given product. 20 winners, 20 do what we're measuring, 2 do not. We only have 2 losers, and since that number of losers is small, it is not fair to use the method. So you've got to identify the number of winners and losers. They both have to be large. If they are large, then it is reasonable for us to use this model to find the confidence interval for a proportion. So here's an example. A random sample of 300 nursing students includes 34 men. We want to find the 95% confidence interval for the overall proportion of nursing students who are men. Recognize these are not all nursing students in the country. These are 300 nursing students, a random sample, simple random sample, we hope, where every person in the population has an equally likely chance of being selected. We have 34 out of 100. Our proportion of interest, our P hat, is 34 divided by 300, the fraction 34 over 300. Winners in this case, what we're measuring, that's men in nursing, we have 34 winners. Now, how many of the folks are losers, and not to be sexist, but these are folks who are not men, i.e. women, who are in nursing. So winners is perceived what we want to measure, losers are what we're not measuring. 34 winners, 266 losers, both very, very large, so it's fair to use this model. Please do not be offended, I'm calling women losers. That, of course, is our strategy we use to identify this model. So our P hat, 34 out of 300, 0.1133, is our probability of being a man. Q hat is the other set, that's 0.8867, 1 minus the probability of being a man, which of course is the probability of being a woman, and n is 300. So we have the information we need, sort of, and we're going to use this to find the confidence interval. I'll remind you that our formula is P hat plus or minus Z alpha by 2 times the square root of P hat Q hat over n. Then the question is, how do we find z alpha by 2? We have all of the other bits of data. We're going to need to go to the z table to find z alpha by 2. Pulling up the z table on Blackboard, we see on the positive z-scores, we see several. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you to the bottom of the page. And you will notice it says common critical values. So for a 0.95 confidence level, our critical value is 1.96. That is our z alpha by 2. 0.99 for a 99% confidence interval, our z alpha by 2 is 2.575. 2 
In rare cases, a 90% confidence interval is used, and if that were to happen, we would use a critical value of 1.645. But typically, we will use 1.96 and 2.575 as a Z alpha by 2 we want to use for our confidence intervals for proportions. So as I've said here, how to find Z alpha by 2, look on the bottom of the Z table for the critical values, and you can see for a 95% confidence interval, we use 1.96. For a 99% confidence interval, use 2.575. So here's the data we had before, 34 out of 300 are men. That's our P hat, 0.1133. The women, 1 minus 0 0.1133, 0 0.8867. That's Q hat. Total number of people in the pool, 300, and is 300. Our formula here is P hat plus or minus Z alpha by 2, square root P hat Q hat over N. Our Z alpha by 2 is 1.96. Using our formula P hat plus or minus Z alpha by 2 square root P hat Q hat over N, making our substitution P hat is 0.1133 plus or minus Z alpha by 2 plus or minus 1.96 square root P hat 0.1133 Q hat 0.8867 divided by 300. I suggest you do what's inside the square root first. So do 0.1133 times 0.8867 divided by 300. Then take a square root. Then multiply by 1.96. And you should get 0.0359. To do the confidence interval, 0.1133 minus 0.0359 is 0.0774. And 0.1133 plus 0.0359 is 0.1492. In order to check your results, I encourage you to visit the website identified on the slide. And we're going to go ahead and do that and see what confidence interval we get for our example. Recall there were 34 men of 300. We're going to plug that into the website and see what confidence interval they give us. So it says enter the sample size. We had 300 in the sample size. The observed proportion, we could do that and the desired confidence level. So the sample size that we had was 300. Our observed proportion was 0.1133. That's our P hat. And our confidence level was 0.95. We'll hit calculate and we'll see what they give us. I'd like to try that again. They want this in terms of a proportion. So I will write 0.1133 as 11.33%, which is what they're encouraging us to do. Now we'll say calculate. And you'll see it's going from 7.74% to 14.92%, uh, or 0.0774 to 0.1492. So that agrees with what we had done earlier. That supports our earlier solution. Now what does that mean? We cannot be sure what the overall proportion of male nursing students is. But the probability is 0 0.95. That the overall proportion is contained somewhere in that interval. We don't know what the overall proportion is, but we're pretty sure it's somewhere between 0 0.0774 and 0 0.1492. If we had all the nursing students in the country, we would expect, with a probability of 95%, that this interval would capture the overall proportion. Let's look at another example. In a clinical study of an allergy drug, 111 of 202 subjects reported experiencing significant relief from their symptoms. We want to construct a 99% confidence interval for the overall proportion of people who experience a significant relief. So our P hat, 111 out of 202, we have 111 winners, so the number of winners is good. The number of losers is 202 minus 111, also very high. So 91 losers. So that's certainly enough for us to use this method. Now our p hat, our proportion is 111 out of 202.5495. The applet would like us to write that as 54.95 percent. 
the probability of losing is 1 minus 0.5495, which is 0 0.4505, and n is 202. So let's go ahead and do our computation. Recall that we need to take p hat plus or minus z alpha by 2 times root p hat q hat over n. The difference in this problem, though, is we want a 99% confidence interval rather than a 95% confidence interval. So our z alpha by 2 is going to have to change. If we look, though, at the uh, confidence level for 99% on the z table, you will see that z alpha by 2 is 2.575. So we know p hat. 0.5495. We know z alpha by 2 is 2.575. Square root p hat we know, 0.5495. q hat we know, 0.4505. n we know is 202. Putting all those together, we should be able to get our confidence interval. So there's our p hat, 0.5495 plus or minus 2.575 times the square root of 0.5495 times 0.4505 over 202. Multiply this times this, divided by this, hit it with the square root, then multiply it by 2.575 to get 0 0.0901. And then 0.5495 minus 0 0.0901 is 45.94. plus 0 0.0901 is 63.96. Let's check this on the applet. So this time our n is 202. And we need to write this as a percentage, so that's 54.95%. And we want a 99% confidence interval. And we'll say calculate, and we'll see what we get. Range of 0.4593 to 0.6397. And let's see how that compares. You'll notice I'm good to three decimal places, but not four, and that's because the computer is likely using a more precise version of z alpha by two than I'm using, but I'm certainly satisfied with that. Now, what does that mean? We cannot be sure what the overall proportion of patients experiencing relief is, but the probability is 0 0.99, 99%, that the overall proportion is contained somewhere within that interval. We're 99% certain that this interval will capture the population mean. And that will conclude this lesson.